So yesterday I recorded a video on experimenting with ChatGPT's API and creating a question and answer system using TypeBot. I was blown away by how ChatGPT can just parse this data source and then provide a very clear and concise answer back to the user. Now the problem that I quickly encountered was how do I feed ChatGPT the data source that it needs in order to provide an answer back to the user? Because before what I was doing, I was just copying and pasting text from a web page. So for a little bit of context, what I was doing was going to web page and just manually copy and pasting. That could work for you know a few pages, but if I'm thinking about doing this for hundreds of pages, it's going to take forever and it's going to be a very cumbersome process. So this video is part one of me trying to figure out a process to take information or data from a web page and then ultimately feed it over to ChatGPT. Ideally, I want to automate this entire process, but first what I am trying to figure out is kind of like the, the structure. How can I put the pieces together manually first to then automate it in a future video? So let me show you version one of what I have so far. In the previous video, I did a very simple Q&A assistant using TypeBot. And it was just simply asking the user to input a question about the property and then sending that question over to ChatGPT API to then offer a, an answer back to the user. So it was very simple, as you can see here, just this text bubble, ask a question about the rental, collecting uh, the question as a variable from the user's input, and then uh, did a post request over to the ChatGPT API. And then ChatGPT would provide an answer in this final block. Another thing that I noticed while playing with the ChatGPT API is that it doesn't have any memory. So I need to store the data that I feed it somewhere. And this can be done in a bunch of different ways. So for example, you can store the memory here in TypeBot as variables, I suppose. Uh, you can store it in a database, but I'm not very versed with databases. So I thought maybe the simplest solution is just to create static JSON files that I can just uh, use as an endpoint to retrieve the information using TypeBot's uh, webhook or this block down here. In a moment, I'm going to show you the file structure that I have in place so that you can see how I'm doing that GET request. And then I'll take you through a quick demo to, to show you what it looks like. Okay, here I am in my code editor. You can see that my file structure and my HTML files are super simple. And you'll see that in a moment as I take you through the demo. Uh, but just to review what I have here, I just have a very simple index home file and followed by three uh, different pages. One for a Los Angeles listing, a San Diego listing, and a San Francisco listing. In each of these HTML files, I have TypeBot embedded along with a couple of functions to pass over some hidden variables. Now let's have a look at the JSON files. Here's where I plan to take that data that I was copying and pasting from the web page and storing it in here in a way that's formatted and ready to, to just pass over to the ChatGPT API. Everything's super simple. I was just trying to get this thing to work and finally it seems to be a viable solution. So let me take you through the process. All right, here we are in the homepage of my demo site and let's go over to the San Francisco listing and then open up TypeBot. Before we ask a question about this listing, let's have a look at what the content looks like. So it just simply says foggy rental is located in San Francisco. Again, super simple. So let's head back to the TypeBot and just ask it, uh, where is this rental located? Okay, it says this rental is located in San Francisco. So it seems to be working, right? Now let's quickly test the other two listings just to make sure everything's fine. We'll open up the LA and San Diego listings. Let's open up the LA one first and ask it the same question. All right, it says this rental is located in Los Angeles. That's great. So now let's go to the San Diego listing and then ask it the same question. All right, it looks good as well. So next, let me take you to TypeBot and then show you how I'm passing in the data from the JSON file over to the ChatGPT API. 
So in this block, you'll notice that we're doing a get request. So the get request is coming from that demo website. And down here, you can see that I'm passing in this variable called file name, uh, followed by the JSON file type. This file name variable is actually a hidden variable created from a function within the typebot script. Let me show you what it looks like on the demo site. So up here, we're going to be pulling with that function that I just showed you, we're gonna be pulling the san-francisco. And it's important for me to name the JSON file the same way because that's how I'm doing the uh, get request from Typebot. So if I go back to Typebot and then open this up a little bit more, you can see that that's how I am dynamically pulling in the appropriate JSON file according to what web page that the user is visiting or browsing. So just for fun, I'm going to do a test request so that you can see how this file name is dynamic and based on that file name, it pulls in the, the data or the JSON file that's appropriate that we're trying to then feed over to ChatGPT. So here I will pass in the variable of file name and then the test value would be San Francisco. So let's go ahead and fire that test request. And down here you can see that it looks accurate. We got a status code of 200 and the content is as expected. So now below we're saving the variable, right? There's only, there's literally just one thing. We're grabbing the data.content and then we're setting that as a variable called content. So from there, we're passing that content variable over to the ChatGPT API. So if I expand this a little bit and then open up the body, you can see that we're passing in the content variable right here. So it seems like this solution will work. I think it could be pretty effective because it's uh, pretty dynamic the way the file names are being captured and retrieved. So if someone is browsing this particular uh, rental, for example, uh, in the script, in the typebot script, I'm going to be grabbing the file name and then allowing the user to ask questions about this specific property, right? Now, the next problem I need to solve for is how do I dynamically create a bunch of these files? So for example, if we do one of these search operators to see how many pages there are, or how many property pages there are. There are 193, so let's, let's just say 150 to just be on the conservative side. That's a ton of files to make uh, manually. Now, of course, I asked ChatGPT, what's the best way to scrape information from a website? And it recommended this tool or this library called Beautiful Soup. It's a Python library. I've never played with it. I actually don't know any Python, but I have ChatGPT at my side, my coding buddy. So I'm going to tackle it and I'm going to try to figure out how I'm able to dynamically create a list of URLs to capture and then scrape the contents of those URLs to then pass to ChatGPT API. Wish me luck. That's going to be part two of trying to feed data over to ChatGPT API in a way that's programmatic, dynamic, none of this copy paste nonsense by hand. All right, see you on the next one.